Hi guys, this is Tammy Hands from Tammy Hands Ministries. How are you guys doing? I want to thank you so much for finding this video. And um, if you haven't watched my other videos, um, if you're not sure, God gives me his word and his visions. <laughs> and um, I have been getting uh, quite a few of his uh, visions and words lately. I started to do um, some videos about uh, preparing. So God is giving us the messages that he wants us all to be prepared. Something is coming. I am here to give you a, uh, a positive message. I don't want this to be taken as a, ne a negative message. When God is going to allow something or he is about to uh, make a move on something, he gives us warnings through our his prophetic people or through messengers. I call myself a messenger. It is a prophetic message. I've been getting a lot of messages from God and he's saying now that he wants us to be prepared. Something is coming that is going to uh, create the need, uh, a situation um, that we are going to need to be prepared. And, and what does this mean, get prepared? I'm sitting in front of my garden right now. I planted my garden a little bit late and I, uh, I, a lot of my tomatoes are still green. Um, but I have already been getting messages that we need to be prepared for quite some time. And um, a lot of Christians already know this, that we, we needed to be prepared. And I planted an extra large garden this year. Um, so far, we're doing good. We didn't, you know, run out of food. But um, there are many, many talks about a food shortage. And actually, God has given me several messages in the last little bit that we need to um, get prepped, prepped. So what he is saying is um, we do need to have an extra supply of food and um you know it's great to be able to create a garden uh but we live i live in an area where it's going to be cold soon and this is all going to die so i'm doing a lot of canning and um not everything is from my garden i don't have that big of a garden i i purchased some other tomatoes and did some canning and i will do these ones as well and i i gave you a message about um dehydrating um you know any kind of leaves okay so i have a lot of kale leaves beet leaves carrot leaves and I bought a dehydrator, but I'm also um, hanging them up to dry. If you don't have a dehydrator, that's okay. You just tie all the leaves together by a string and you hang it upside down outside and they will dry. You crunch them all up, put them in a jar. And in the winter time, you can mix those dried leaves um, into all of your foods, um, you know, uh, into salads, into potatoes, into any of your, I, I'm a vegetarian, but into any of your meats or anything like that because we may not be able to get the food come winter time. We may not, there may be a shortage of, um, I think something bit me, I keep on itching my arm. There may be a shortage of uh, vegetables and uh, fruits or anything like this. There may be a shortage of everything. We just don't know how far it's gonna go. So the messages I've been getting from God is do we definitely need to be, be prepared? Why can't I say that? Be prepared with extra food. So since the, we're still in a season where the, the fruits and vegetables are still in abundance in the stores or in farmers markets or perhaps in your own garden. Do not waste a thing, my friend. If you, whatever, even if you buy it from the grocery store, one tomato has a lot of seeds in it. That can plant you in the, the spring coming up. That could give you a lot of tomatoes. Even if you just went to the grocery store and bought one tomato, you can get like a hundred seeds out of one tomato. We may not be able to buy seeds in the spring. They may be all gone. So I'm saying, get the seeds now. You just slice open the tomato, dig it all out, dry it out on a paper towel or on your counter, on a plate or something like this. And um, you're gonna have an abundance of seeds. There's, there will be no shortage. The message I got, today is September 2nd, 2022, that I got this message at 12.30 a.m. this morning. God said, we need to get seeds. He actually gave me that message that we need to get seeds. He's given me a lot of messages and, I, and I've been very reluctant about giving you these messages because I don't want to, um, you know, um, I don't want people to be worried. In fact, God wants you to be prepared. He, he's trying to help you. And I am just a mouthpiece for God. I'm a messenger. And whatever he tells me, I need to tell you, I need to be honest with you. God is, is really pushing me to give these messages and I was reluctant and I wasn't really 
putting the messages out there and there if you've noticed there's been a little bit of delay in my messages because these are the kind of messages he's giving me and I didn't really want to come on here and it's you know I don't want to sound like doom and gloom but it, but it doesn't have to be like doom and gloom let's look at it like our father God loves us so much that he is revealing something extremely important to us right now he wants us to heed to his word listen to his word he is trying to warn us in advance and you know I wasn't really the type to save and to do all these things myself before and I'm doing it now and I and I want to help you I don't want to just help myself I don't want to just keep this information to myself although it is a difficult message to give you God showed me what is coming and um, there is a, a change about to take place in our world and it is pretty major and I've given messages already that a major change is about to take place and when change takes place it isn't always a smooth transaction or a smooth um, you know um, transition it sometimes can be hard times in order for this change to take place you know um, the world is headed in a in a pretty bad direction and and God is putting his hand down on it and saying he's going to make a change so or he's allowing this change that's coming up he's allowing it to happen because it will bring us into a better time but in order to make that change sometimes change isn't easy right um, we have to maybe go through a little bit of uncomfortableness if that's a word being uncomfortable for a little bit but God is giving us fair warning and he's saying there may be a food shortage there, we, there may be a shortage of all kinds of supplies not just food but all kinds of things now is not the time to get rid of excess clothes and socks and shoes and hats and scarves and winter coats and blankets and all these kind of things keep everything God says keep all our supplies right now and he wants us to think he literally said this and I saw images of um, um, covered wagons like pioneer days God is we ha we need to go step back in time because we have become so modernized and that the world has gotten too far out of control and God is going to take us in reverse and I actually saw a clock going counterclockwise in the opposite direction and we went back in time in the vision that God showed me back to the pioneer times in fact and God is saying we need to think like the pioneer days and we need to sharpen up on our skills and to think like pioneers how did they make it without electricity and running water and grocery stores that may be upon us and I'm not saying this to scare you God wants us to be fair warned and it, it this is a blessing that God is giving us so here's the things that we need to um, think about food number one so God wants us to get an abundant supply of canned foods dried foods things that will last us let's say over the winter okay and I, I wasn't a saver like that I didn't have a fruit cellar with all these things in it but I, I do now and I don't want to be I want I want to be fair and give these messages to you I'm not going to keep them to myself so you need to get as much food as you can canned goods and dried goods that can last you over the winter and water if if our water supply was cut off how would we get water everything is frozen during the winter so every container I'm gonna give this information to you every container you have you need to fill it up with water now and just put it away and forget about it that isn't gonna be your drinking water if you're just like I have cats and you know those jugs with the cat litter in it when that jug is done I've been filling them up with water not to drink because it's disgusting it had cat litter in it to flush my toilets or to water my plants if needed um, so you need to fill up every container that you possibly can then you also need to have drinking water excuse me I'm outside and um, little bugs are around me or something um, so we need lots of bottles of water and you need a filtration system you can buy little straws that will filter out uh, water or the Brita containers you can buy the little filters and the Brita so um, even it I'm talking about those containers that I filled up if I really don't have any water I'm gonna have to pour that water into my Brita container um, if there's no running water 
I really don't know how, what level we're going to get to, uh, but God has told me that he's taking us back to the pioneer days, and I know they didn't have running water, and I know they didn't have electricity, and I, I pray that we do not get to that level, but I'm just a messenger for God, and I'm putting the messenger message out there for you. Let's think about lighting. If we don't have electricity, what kind of lights, what kind of lighting do you have? Candles, flashlights, we're going to need a lot of batteries. But another great thing is, while you can still get it, is little solar lights from the dollar store. You can put them outside during the day, bring them in at night, and you'll have a little bit of lighting in your home at night. We need to get that kind of stuff while we can, while it's still summer and they're still selling this stuff. If we try to think, okay, I'll get that later, it'll be gone off the shelves. You won't be able to get these things. Um, I, I know a really hard one is a heating source. If, if our hydro or electricity was cut off, our power for the winter, or at least even like a week or a couple of weeks or a small amount of time, how would we make it in the cold weather? There, there are different kind of heating um, 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 supplies. Um, you know, they have like oil lamps and, and um, I've been looking into it for quite a while. And um, I actually just bought a used wood burning stove that I'm going to hook up into my garage. I don't know if you can do anything like that, but um, look online for alternative heating sources. And there are some nifty little things that I, I, I looked at last winter because oh, I didn't know if we we're going to have power, power outages last winter. So there's um, some nifty little things online. Uh, heating sources during power outages. Look those up, please. God doesn't want us to be sitting ducks. He's giving us fair warning. Something is coming and it's pretty major and he is going to walk us through it. He said he will be there for us, but he needs us to go out and get the supplies. He, he isn't going to be, you know, giving every single person miraculous heating in their homes and, and um, miraculous food appearing on their tables. He's giving us fair warning right now and we need to heed those warnings. We need to get the, the extra food supplies, some type of water stored up and um, you know, some kind of lighting and, um, and heating. Heating, I find, is a difficult one because I, I live in an area where it's going to get very cold this winter. And um, so, you know, there are um, some different heating sources. So please go online and look those up, what is best for you. The other thing that God wanted us to uh, be mindful of is um, supplies like medical supplies. If they were to close everything because there was a, a state of emergency going on, and I'm telling you that there is, it is going to be something like that. It isn't going to be a sickness that they're going to announce. It is going to be a different type of state of emergency. And you may not be able to go to the hospital if you're sick. So God is saying, he, he told me we need uh, a basic medical supply at home. Band-Aids, if you get cut, you may not be able to go to the hospital to get stitches. Um, you know, something um, for vomiting, diarrhea, pain. Um, you know, uh, bandages and uh, uh, like gauze and, and, you know, the basic stuff, um, uh, polysporin, neosporin and, and um, burn medication. If you happen to burn yourself at home, if the hospital was closed, if they said no one is allowed out on the streets because there is a state of emergency, even you wouldn't be able to even go to the hospital. So these are the kind of things that God has been telling me. It's not an easy message for me to bring to you, my friend, but I care about you. God cares about you. And he wants this message to be given to you. We're sounding the alarm so that we are not sitting ducks. So think about what you have in your medicine cabinet. If you are taking medication, please get your medicine in advance, a three month supply in advance. Usually the doctor will give you. Think about that. Get your medication in advance. Have things on hand because you may not be able to leave your house to go to the doctor the pharmacy might not be open to fill your prescription if there was some kind of state of emergency. And um, the other thing that God really stressed is we need to have skills, skills like the pioneers. If you ran out of food, what could you offer your neighbor to trade? So God showed me my sewing box and he said, even something as simple as a needle and thread if you could sew something on somebody's coat or their zipper or something like this, they may have an extra can of food that they could trade. Think about tradables, what you can trade with people. 
What kind of skills do you have? If you know construction, that's great. Somebody might need something fixed in their home if there was a, 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 a shutdown and, and uh, we all had to stay home. They, you know, their furnace might, well, if, if we didn't, well, just because we had to stay in, we still might have uh, electricity and water, uh, but we may not be able to leave our home um, to go into stores and things like that. But, you know, if, and, and, and a really important one is like a fishing rod because, um, you know, if there was a, a pond nearby or um, depending on where you live, if the water wasn't frozen, you could fish. And um, they do ice fishing too. They just drill a hole, stick the pole down in there, and you can fish even during the winter. God said, think like the pioneers. So we got to look online. How did the pioneers make it? How did they do this? How did they do that? How did they prepare food um, without stoves and ovens and microwaves and, and fridges? And, and let's let's just go back in time just a little bit and, and start thinking about that and, and, and um, prepare ourselves a little bit so that we're not sitting ducks and um, that, you know, God loves us very much. That's why he's given us these messages in advance. He wants to help us. And there are, uh, um, you know, uh, some serious things on the horizon and God wants us to be um, aware of it and to be smart. He, he wants us to be ahead of the game, not stuck at home without food and water and our bare essentials. So just these things don't have to be expensive. You can, you know, think about your resources, you know, filling up jugs of water, getting those little solar lights. And, um, you know, one thing that I had thought of last winter because I thought maybe the, the hydro and the electricity was gonna go out last winter, like the heating, I bought a little $40 tent, just a, the smallest tent that you can buy. If you were to set that tent up in your house, it's very small, like a two man tent, and you went in there, and even if you had little candles burning, that little bit of candles and the body heat of you and a couple family members, you were inside this tent huddling with blankets, you could survive, you could make it. So even if you got one of those little tents, even if you only had a tarp or a blanket and you put it over your kitchen table and you went under the kitchen table in that blanket, um, you can look online. There's so many nifty um, little um, heating sources. Um, even if you got a clay pot, and I did all this, <laughs> my friend and I, we bought the clay pots. And if you put candles inside the clay pot, the clay pot heats up and it emanates, you know, heat from this clay pot. And if you were in a very small enclosed area, like a blanket over your table or a little tiny tent in your home and you're in there and you even put a blanket over your tent to keep the heat in, you could make it if the, if the hydro or the electricity or the heating was shut off. We could do this. We can do this. And something like this may be on the horizon. Um, I don't know how serious it's going to get, but start thinking of emergency things like this. We are so spoiled in the Western world. I live in Canada. And a lot of the people on here are from Canada and US. We're so spoiled. We have no idea. Those pioneer days are so far behind us. We don't know how to survive without grocery stores and pharmacies and, and uh, you know, modern technology and all this kind of stuff. We, we just don't even know how to survive. Enough of that God is saying. He wants to take us back a step to remind us that he gave us skills. He gave us an intelligent mind. He gave us the resources, everything we need is around us. Um, so we need to really um, start looking at, at this kind of stuff, okay? So uh, I don't wanna make the message too long. Um, I'm trying to keep the messages short. Conserve as much as you can. Get those seeds, get your medical supplies and, and get food supplies and water supplies and some kind of lighting, as I was saying, candles, uh, lighters, I mean, yeah, um, uh, flashlights, batteries, solar lights and Think about how you would set up if you didn't have any heat in your house, even if it was for three days. That's pretty darn cold in the winter. Blanket over your table, buy a little tent and uh, put little candles in there. Buy lots of candles, my friend. And um, this clay pot system, if you look it up online, heating with a clay pot, you will find it. There's uh, you know, a lot of these little um, things online. So please, do your research, be, do your homework. How did pioneers survive? Let's start thinking like that. And um, I, I will continue to bring you messages from God. And I love you and God loves you so much that he puts, he downloads us with this information to give to you. I'm the mouthpiece, just telling you what God wants you to know.
Um, all right. We're not going to live in fear. That is my final thing I'm going to say today. We're not, we're going to live in faith. We're going to have faith in God. We're not going to live in fear. That is from the enemy. We're going to be smart and we're going to go and we're going to, we're going to get our supplies. So we're not sitting ducks and we're not, um, you know, left in, in disarray and left in a panic. God doesn't want that. Stay calm. Do not live in fear. Just do what needs to be done. Let's get this done. And so that we can relax. Once you have supplies, you can relax because you are all set. And um, let's keep our prayers going out to God. God hears all of our prayers. If we all pray in numbers, just pray to God. We need to pray. Lord, we come to you. We pray to you that you will. You are giving these messages that it is coming, Lord. And I pray that you will, you know, bring it in, in a very small portion. Lord, we are not used to the pioneer days. We are used to the modern comforts, Lord. Whatever it is, please bring it quickly and end it quickly. Um, you know, and, and, and please give us all uh, an, the intelligent mind that you, you gave us. Let us use it in a, in a very um, great way now, Lord. And um, when we're out there looking for things and shopping, Lord, sharpen our minds and tell us what to buy, what to do. Download us with the information, Lord. And I lose the power of Holy Spirit over each and every one of us. That Holy Spirit will come and guide us on this journey, on this survival path that we are entering into now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for all of your guidance. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. And um, let's just go and, and get done what needs to be done so that we can relax knowing that we are prepared. Ah, I love you. And um, um, if you, uh, we all know somebody that needs to hear this message, please share this message subscribe give the thumbs up but most importantly share the message so that everyone can be prepared let's not leave one single one of our brothers and sisters in the lord out there to panic uh when and if the time comes that we're going to need supplies so let everybody know please let them see this video or just tell them with your mouth you know let let people know it is not a time to be silent it is a time to raise a ruckus let people know let people be prepared in Jesus mighty name I pray and uh, thank you Lord thank you God and um, thank you all and I'll see you on the next video take care bye for now my friends